What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. I am joined today by the new face of video games, Blessing at AOEA Jr. Bellatro is life. God, are you so how much of life is it for you? Oh, it's all of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's any free moment I get where I it's just me and my Steam Deck. I'm like, well, I'll, like, I guess I can do a quick run of Bellatro. And there's no <laughs> such thing as a quick run of Bellatro. I'm there for like an hour at least. Yeah. Great. How much are you average in a day? Like real talk. Oh, it's not that crazy. Like, I mean, I started playing it, I think, last week, and I'm about 15 hours in. And so, like, I'm 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 pretty into it. I think the fact that I'm splitting time between it and Tekken is the thing that's keeping uh -oh. me from putting in too much time into Bellatro, but I'm also at this point probably approaching 80 hours in a Tekken, so we'll see. I think this is going to make up the rest of my free time for the year. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, what a time to be alive. Isn't that right, Big Daddy himself, Greg Miller? That's right, Tim. We're alive, and there's a lot of cool things happening. A lot of how, horrible things happening, too. I'm good. Drinking a Coke? Yeah, I'm having a Coke. Yeah. You know, recovering from Raw, mm -hmm. still. You yeah. know what I mean? We, we, we screamed our, our, our throats out, you know what I mean? Uh, got that raw throat. We got that raw throat. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, Woods and Kofi kicked off my WWE 2K24 coverage with an embargo. Let's play. We'll have up uh, next week. So I've been working on that review. And then when I'm not doing that, hell dive. Ooh, I'm back into hell. Round of the group today, of course, we have the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Great afternoon, gamers. Great afternoon to you all. Uh, but of course, this is the Kind of Funny Games cast where each and every week we get together to talk about video games and all the things that we love about them. Uh, if you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny <laughs> membership on <laughs> Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free. You can watch us record them live and you get a daily exclusive show called Greg Way, where Greg talks about Greg whatever he Way. wants, normally answering questions from the audience. What's today's Greg Way about, Greg? Uh, the fact that it's a 20 minute epic as I unpack a thought I've had for a long time about what home actually is, you know, and how mm. WWE is kind of home and going to arenas and mm. things like that or home. Fun. I love that. Thank you. I'm glad you did. A lot. You guys can hear 20 <laughs> minutes of that. To it. Just uh, about yeah. to watch it for once. Know, right? <laughs> Asgard isn't a place. It's a people. <sighs> right. It's a people. Of course. Uh, you can get Gamescast when for free, them, though, with ads and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services I around Andy over there. the globe. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so that's also Andy. Did you? I threw it in. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. My bad. But, yeah. he didn't, but he didn't ask me how it was. Is the thing. Yeah. Well, how how he spent time on me and Greg. Yeah. He just didn't spend any time on Andy. Well, you you, you gave me such a quick response. You know what I mean? You could have gave me something, I'm but just, no. Look, I don't want. Look, I just, it's not about I, that. It's not about look, that. Greg, I just want him to, like, to not, want to. I want him to want to. you and your cool, stupid sweater. Look how cool his sweater is. That's right. I should really need one. I don't want to spend money on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that means I'm spending money on it. <laughs> Maybe it'll just come out of nowhere. <laughs> Take it out of your budget. <laughs> you got a little marketing budget. You got a little petty cash, don't you? Uh, but like I was saying, you can get this on podcast services as one. well. And speaking of podcast services, shout out to Kind of Funny Game Showdown now being available there and being the number one video game podcast of all on time. all podcast services. Uh, for, yeah, for video games. So thank you very much for your support over there. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Streaking Ain't Easy, and Delaney Twining. Shout out to the absolute best. Shout out to the support in general. I sent you that screenshot. Yeah. It's not even worth ever tweeting about charts for podcasts. They're all fucking bullshit and based on yet. We'll still do it, though. But it was still nice. Yeah, when I, I, I checked in, and we had three of the top five video game podcasts on Apple, and I screenshot it. It was Game Showdown. Then it was like the besties. Then it was Games, Games Daily. Daily. Then it was Game Scoop. And then it was uh, Games Cast. Like, that's, that's nice. love I like to see that. It. Love to see it. So, yeah, thank you all so much for that support. It really does mean a lot to us. Uh, and if you want to support us and hang out with us all day on Thursday, February 29th, the launch day of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a leap year day, which is always very exciting to me. I, I find more joy in that than I should. Uh, you can hang out with Andy and Mike. I, I want to read this because I really like the, the copy that somebody wrote. Was this Mike? It was Mikey, yeah. Uh, kind of funny in the world. Celebrate the launch of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Our favorite party members, Mike and Andy, <laughs> will be starting their journey into Rebirth with a marathon stream celebration. Stop in to celebrate the big day and support the fun as these two will venture into the unknown. Just like Elsa is this Kingdom Hearts. Uh, one Twitch sub or YouTube membership adds more time to the clock. How long can we make these two best friends play this game? Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. Tomorrow. He must have edited that. I didn't see that part <laughs> in the edit that I saw. I, I noticed that immediately. He must have <laughs> added that in by the end of it Jesus oh please. man what what a what an amazing man so it'll be a, it'll be kind of a normal stream but we want to push it and make it a little bit of a jumbo stream nothing too yeah, crazy no! it's thursday we're not doing a 24 hour or anything mm -hmm. wild like that but we'd like to go as long as we can without 
you know, our parents get mad at us and tell yeah, us to go to sleep exactly, at school night. Exactly. You know? uh, just I mean, you toss dad a sweatshirt, maybe he took the other way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this episode of Gamescast is going to be kind of a, another one of those catch-all what we've been playing. Because, like, we've been doing a lot of reviews, a lot of previews, a lot of big things. We haven't been together before. in a long time. And yeah, exactly. I walked in, I stared at the desk, I'd ask Blessing where I sit. I was like, I don't, I forget. I if, don't it's, if it's an actual core group, what is it? Yeah, because uh, we've been doing a lot of reviews that kind of splintered us off onto different shows or, or whatever. A lot of Final Fantasy stuff, which... <laughs> Your boy's been thriving out here, plus. And don't worry, we're still gonna get some rebirth thoughts today because I want I need to know what Andy's been thinking uh, with his time of the game. But before we get into all of that, I got a quick little one, two, three bang of some games I've been playing that I want to talk about. One thing I want to get out of the way, don't worry, I'm not gonna talk about it too long. But I do need to talk about Pokemon Go because did you catch him? Out? Today marks my one year anniversary of playing this game. Whoa, hardcore! Like every, I, I've played every single day. For an entire year, does not deserve a round of applause. Oh, in okay. fact, it deserves oh. a lot of shame. You yeah. piece a lot of, of shit, questions. you loser. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Why aren't um, you married yet? Marry your fiance. Let her have the Christmas tree. <laughs> oh. But I do. I do just want to say, like, it's it's crazy, like how much I've invested into this game, like money, but time and 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 actual exercise and efforts and planning days, like. Many, many, many days around like, oh, there's events happening and I'm going to do them. And it's just been so cool. I've talked about it a lot on Games Daily, uh, but the the community of it all is it blows me away because like I know in 2016 there was the big moment of everyone playing. But anytime there's a community day, I start looking around and I, I never would have realized how many people are playing Pokemon Go in the wild. But now that I know the telltale signs, if you, if you see somebody walking with a, a charging cord like set to the backpack about you're probably playing you're going you watch watch them, watch them. <laughs> <laughs> it's an electro it's an explosion uh if you see like uh people walking and just like spinning their fingers you're like oh my god they're going and it's been wild they're like going. They're, they're going baby. <laughs> they're going and uh it's just been so cool to see the the varied groups of people that are playing the game that I run into and there's been a lot of people that I've run into time and time again now like me and Goldfarb have been making friends out there and like actually trading with people that went to Korea so they got like regional exclusive ones and came back and they're like oh you guys were looking for the Skiddo do you still need it it's like we do need the Skiddo <laughs> and so now we're fucking raiding in Skiddos baby it's awesome uh but yeah it was cool this weekend I saw a, a family of like a g multi generational family playing this game. This old woman's playing, and this five year old boy's playing. And I'm just like, this oh is, wow, this is incredible, man. It's like the t it's like the commercials that they show you, it like to really kind of make is. you cry. Yeah, totally, man. And you know, we all made fun of the Wii commercial uh, or the Switch commercials, and then playing. And it's like we've all been in those situations where it's like, oh, that kind of actually happened. I feel that way about Pokemon Go. It's a, uh, it's just absolutely wild. Uh, what's Greg doing here? <laughs> what's happening? <here? laughs> Greg wrote down a message for me to read mm -hmm. to everybody. I get a skiddo in my shorts if I don't wipe too well. I do like that. <laughs> do we like that? Though? Do we like that? Top oh, five man. video game podcast. Yeah, do like yeah. That. But what this I, is I, why we're number five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna drop oh, after that. But I uh, just wanted to to give an update that I since I did grind so impossibly hard i am at uh, level 46 out of 50 which is insane because like, levels, levels 40 to 50 are like wild stupid you've hard, been there forever yeah. when yeah. are you going to accept the magic egg from dylan cyberbones it's not the magic or i don't even know what it is just, <laughs> it's just that's the problem man it's like you, you got a gift every day there's so much back and forth and I, i'm good about it i'm like really good about it but there's no way to message or communicate because it's a kid's game so they're not trying to like have you be weirdos Jim Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's hard to communicate with people and like time certain things why did you drop a jim ryan <laughs> jim ryan didn't want crossplay remember on playstation because he was worried about the kids <laughs> Oh, well, no video game fact. You should know that. You shit. should that is, true. Oh, shit. that is all true. No, I, we need we need to figure that. out. It's just hard to coordinate that stuff. But uh, if you're listening, just do it. Do it on your own time. I don't. I won't need to worry about the experience points. You get them yourself. I'll probably be fine. Um, but I'm at level 46 out of 50. I will get to 50. And the thing about this, Andy, when you Let hit level it. 50 in the game, in the game you get a bomber jacket. And it's oh. the only way to get the bomber jacket. Oh. And now bless. Do you they sell that bomber this. jacket? They do sell the bomber jacket. I thought we I thought we brought this down where you originally said this, then Goldfarb talked you down and you had to get like 42 or 3. Exactly. So I bought the bomber jacket, Andy. The bomber oh. jacket's at my house. But 
We were talking, I was like, but you didn't earn I don't the want to have to wait till 50. Once I hit 40, I'll do it. And at this point, I was like level 26 or something. I fucking breeze past it. I hit 40, and I was like, no, no, no. Mm. We're doing 50. So you will not see me in that jacket until wow. I hit 50. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. But more important than the level, I have 819 out of 841 of these little fuckers. God damn. Which is holy crazy shit. that are available in this game. And uh, it is at the point now, so I have 22 left. And they are all so hard to get. Who is probably have to go to go to Egypt or something? What's, got what's them all, the right? next yeah. most realistic one that you could get? There's a whole bunch of them, but they're all just like the skiddo from Greg's <laughs> band. <laughs> I, well, I need another skiddo because I need to evolve into Go Goat. So it, oh. you know, it's this whole fucking gotcha. thing, you guys. Anyways, that's the update for y'all. I am skiddo wasting my life the rear away. Go Goat front. <laughs> But one day you'll see me in a cool jacket. Um, <laughs> moving on to other games, I want to give a shout out to a game called Hellskate. Audio listener. Ah, they, ah, they sent me a deck, which is really cool. Very, very Andy colors. Oh, you know that's beautiful. Mean? Yeah, a little kitty cat on there. I love doing that. some stuff. Hellskate's awesome. Hellskate is a game that is in early access now on Steam. Um, I have been playing, as you all know, a lot of games on my new Steam Deck OLED. I'm in love with this thing. I, I love just seeing Tim log into. Five games per minute. Yeah, that, <laughs> I'm oh, like, get my little notification on the bottom right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an out a little bit. You know what I mean? No, but it's been it's been awesome. And Hellskate is one of those games. I'm and here's what's hard. I've been playing so much Final Fantasy, and I'm still playing Final Fantasy. So it is more the I'm popping in a little bit. My, the big problem I have, you guys, is that I care too much about music and sound effects of video games. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I don't want to play this game while I'm watching TV. Like, yeah, I, yeah, you got to like, you gotta get the full experience. So it's been a big problem for me for both Hellskate and Penny's Big Breakaway that I like the music so much that I'm like, ah, mm. what I thought was going to be two games that I could just play at any time, I can't, man. So mm. it's been rough. But Hellskate is, it's a, it's a roguelike Tony Hawk game. Which is kind of like, all right, this is My this dream. is amazing, right? It uh, is very, very, very PlayStation Two inspired. It plays very similarly and feels almost identical to Tony Hawk's Underground. And so, is that that's a plus or a minus? It's a major okay, plus, okay. Um, and a big reason for that is a lot of the team that actually worked on that specific game worked on this and are working on this because it is still in early access. Uh, but it just came out in early access uh, like last week. Ton of stuff to do. I will say it's a little more barren than I would like right now. I'm kind of in that weird place where. There's so much content, but I'm like, I'd rather just wait and like fully invest That's, when it's out. So my question if, if for being barren right mm -hmm. now, right, is, is that because it's early access, you think? Do you think mm -hmm. by the time this becomes a full-fledged game and it's re ready to ship 1.0, it'll be great? Oh, yeah. And, you know, barren might be even a little too aggressive. It's more the thing of like, there's so much here, but there's just, I, I'm like, I don't want to have to do all this again later, you know, right. that yeah, type yeah, of totally. thing. Um, so, but I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It feels so good. It's that Tim thing of me being such a little bitch about this where it's a game that's like games that I love and it's so close to being exactly it, but it's not. And so like, there's no revert or at least so far I haven't had a revert. And that's really, it's really, you know, harsh in my vibe, man. Um, but besides that, explain it's, that it's revert. a revert, a revert's when you can, they added it in Tony Hawk three. When you come down onto a ramp, you can hit R2 and it like, turns your your board around so it extends your combo from uh, uh, certain moves okay. into a manual gotcha. and you keep going um so not having that is is uh is a bummer for me because like i really really like that uh for combos the game doesn't need it though because the game's more focused around combat which is pretty funny but you, the concept of it is it's very similar to hades and tony hawk where yeah. you start the level out and you get to choose one of three different like buffs and the buff can be uh, more HP or the buff could be here's a special move that allows you to shoot fireballs bigger or something like that every trick you do is attacking enemies there's enemies around the the world and as you defeat them you move on to the next like portion of the level and as you go in there you can kind of choose three between three other things that are going to get you a buff in the next level so very much a roguelike and I'm enjoying that and the concept of a Tony Hawk like that brilliant and i would have never thought about it but it's so good the music is very tony hawk inspired it's not licensed music but it has that uh you know i don't even know how you'd call it these days but the the pop punk vibe um with some metal and some hip-hop but like that I mix i will say it there is some like level of licensing to it because it demonetized my video oh really and it was all like by the song owners or whatever mm. and it was I, I don't know if it was multiple owners or just like I don't know what it was, but it was like, hey, you can't make money on this video. 
So I chopped maybe that it, shit out. So maybe it is licensed. <laughs> like, it's yeah, yeah. just not... It's not ACDC. Right, right, <laughs> You know right. what I mean? And then Goldfinger and things mm-hmm. like that. But I love it. It's like the, they're totally nailing the vibes I'm looking for. Um, it's a little hard to wrap your head around the controls of it because, like, adding, like, the reason I say it plays most like Thug is because it reminds me of the getting off your board in Thug, which I don't know if you remember, Bless, mm-hmm. was not my favorite part of that game. Like, it controls a little wonky compared to being on the board. Adding the combat... You really need to wrap your head around. It's like, oh, this isn't Tony Hawk. It's very close, but there's different things you got to do. And once you kind of like get into the zone of it, it is so awesome. And you really just get into that 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 flow state. And there's like boss fights or like bigger um, enemy encounters where like there's like a big dragon, and then you need to like grind along the dragon's back. Mm, and I'm like, nice. this is freaking cool as hell so hellskate's definitely something that if you enjoy Tony Hawk games at all, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. It's awesome on the steam deck it runs so well and uh i'm very very impressed with this thing and i can't wait to see more of it in the future i'm I'm happy that they're getting it out this way because i do think they're going to learn a lot about the balance of the different upgrades to when when the final product comes out i think it's going to be something really special um so right now i would say if you enjoy tony hawk at all you should definitely give this thing a shot um but i don't think that it's like gonna like change your mind about skating games but this is the closest to a tony hawk game a non-tony hawk games ever felt to me so that is like a major 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 compliment so shout out to them for that uh and do you ever i mean like yeah this is a good holdover you said but it's you know the closest it's been mm -hmm. do you ever just stop and think about getting a skate soon there's a skate coming this is gonna be so great It'll come at some point. Ben loves to go scooting, and it's just the way oh, yeah. his wheels sound on the sidewalk, and we go to the skate park sometimes. I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't wait for skate. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried Skater XL? I have not. Well, no, I did. Yeah, I did that when they first dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tried Session Skate Sim? No, what was the little, the cartoony one that Barrett liked a lot? Skate Bird. The sequel oh, no. Ollie, to... Ollie Ollie. Yeah, Ollie Ollie World, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been a few that have been there. This haven't been it. Yeah, and all those ones you named, a lot of them have great things about them, but none of them are Tony Hawk, and none of them have even trying to be Tony sure. Hawk. Sure. This is... Well, thug. What do you mean? I think there's a difference right between K- Tony Hawk regular and Tony Hawk thug, right? Yeah, but That's in gameplay, thug. gameplay, it's still the same, though. The arcade like, See, what I want is get stuff. off the board, have stupid little challenges, you know, feel more than just doing combos and uh, high scores. Yeah, I would still say Thug is more in line with Tony Hawk compared to Skate, which is very, it's way more sim. It's walking sure. up to a dude. Hey, man, a walrus stole my CD yeah. player. How are you going to help me? You know, that sort of thing. He's walking, talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just agents, baby. <laughs> oh, that's another fun thing, too, Eddie, is the, um, like the upgrades you get, their, their tapes. So like, yeah. there's a lot of Tony Hawk love in this. And so it's, it's very, very cool. Uh, and the, the main character's name is uh, Anton Falcon. Instead of Tony Hawk. Ha. Yeah. Hey. Ha. Uh, hey. Uh, another game I've been playing not enough of uh, is Penny's Big Breakaway, which is uh, from a lot of people that worked on Sonic Mania. Um, I have not had the time to be able to just really sit and just play through this thing. And a lot of that has to do with what I was saying earlier about really wanting to give it what it deserves because of how good the soundtrack is. Um, Cause the soundtrack is amazing. Like just like we knew with Sonic Mania and other games, T-Lopes and the crew have worked on. Uh, but the gameplay is phenomenal. It just takes a long time to kind of like have it all click because it doesn't play the way it looks like it plays. Like bless mm. you, you were playing a little bit, right? Yeah. Like what? What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I so I played it in like a preview form, and then like, since then, in the last week, I've gone back to it on Steam Deck and also picked it up on PlayStation to see like how it would compare and contrast. And in first picking it up, I was having a bit of what you're talking about in terms of, yeah, when you first pick up the controller, the game feel, not that the game feel isn't good, but it's more so you have to wrap your mind around it. Like it doesn't feel the way you'd expect it to feel. It immediately kind of transported me back to very early 2000s slash late 90s 3D platformer because that's what it's emulating a lot of the time. Like, I don't know, I don't know what the right comparisons would be, like maybe a, a bit of Banjo, but a bit more mobile and a bit more like a bit more interesting traversal than that like there's a little bit of 3d sonic in there but i feel like there are other platformers in there that i just can't pinpoint i don't know if it's like glover or some shit that i didn't <laughs> play but there's like something there around like this feels rocket robot on wheels i mean honestly maybe. Is. yeah actually that might be it because i play i did play a lot of rocket robot on wheels um but yeah it has like that sort of energy that i appreciate and enjoy the art style of it i really dig like as, as you saw if you're watching the video version a lot of bright colors a lot of cool like animation like the characters <clears throat> feel cartoony in a very delightful way that i dig the levels are kind of what i they're, they're a good mix of like you know the linear kind of platformy levels if you like a crash or if you like that kind of game 
but also they wind around and have interesting pathing at the same time and so it's not like the straight up like oh man i'm just going towards a path like these are levels that feel a bit more alive than you'd expect from like that basic form of platforming and i think a lot of the stuff it does so far that i played uh works but i'm also just still very early in it but even as i went back to it last week and started playing it again i i started to come around on it in a way that the tools they give you for mobility i think are really cool and i could see them going really cool places they give you a, a um a yo-yo that like allows you to do a lot of really cool things and so you'll throw it out as penny right and then like if you double tap square you'll throw it out and then dive towards it right if you if you throw it out and you hold square you'll do like a little like swingy thing that'll allow you to like kind of get an extra jump in the air and there's stuff like that, that i think is really cool and really neat it reminds me actually of something like mario odyssey exactly. or mario 64 right where the mobility is like part of having fun like how do you how are you getting around the level but not mario sunshine game. no <laughs> <laughs> never mario sunshine we'll have to talk about that later yeah Andy. <laughs> but yeah like i mean I'm, i've been enjoying it so far for that stuff it's in a weird way the yo-yo thing kind of reminds me of when i was a kid i was playing um smash 64 and like when i unlocked ness had no idea what the fuck ness was <laughs> and i was like what the fuck game is this guy from playing Bre penny's big, big breakaway i think penny's big breakaway is the game that i thought N ness was from Oh, that's before hilarious. I knew what Earthbound that's was. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, bless you're nailing it there. It's like I I feel like there's so much that this game has that I just can't wait to actually like really get into because I'm still very much in the not tutorial but like the early levels of them teaching you stuff. But once you get the yo-yo, which is pretty much instantly, it's a weapon, but it's also a traversal mechanic, and it's a very momentum based uh, 3D platformer, and it has the cappy effect from odyssey like you're talking about of mm -hmm. like being able to throw it to then jump on it and then roll and keep going but what's interesting about the design of the the game is the level design is the the showcase of this all like you don't have control over the camera like it, the camera's completely guided and that's hard to like wrap your head around because you're so used to being able to use the right stick to be able to see things differently they're guiding you through this adventure almost like it's a star fox type on is it an auto scroll thing it's not auto scroll, okay. but like it's auto camera though. So right. when you're you're holding forward going, the camera just automatically is like showing you exactly what you need to see. Um, but once you get over that being just a little bit different, you start to realize it's brilliant. And you start to realize like that the design is so smart at a, like showing you what you need to know to be able to jump off of a ramp to reach down and get the momentum uh rolling so you can jump up and get more uh air or whatever and it starts to become this like beautiful rhythm as you're uh, jumping around because the right stick controls your yo-yo so if you're swinging it around it just swings it around uh to attack but then you can also like bless was saying like jump and like use the dashes when you land though you can use r2 to jump on the yo-yo and kind of like run on it so it like speeds up and it's just like the perfect move set for um, both combat and just platforming and getting around. And what is super cool is it, <clears throat> there's a lot of enemies you're just kind of like fighting, but there's like penguins that attack you in a lot of the levels. They're not always there, but these like little guys will just run and like one of them is not really going to mess you up. But when there's like 10 or 20 of them on you, everyone slows you down and just like kills the momentum. And it gets really scary and claustrophobic. And if too many of them get on you, you eventually like you lose your life or perish <laughs> yeah. it's just like it's this cool thing that's just like i it does i don't know what it reminds me of but it's like it's just it's fun it's like there's yeah. like a, a video it feels game like something that it. It, it feels like something that that is classic even yeah. though yeah it's taking like a lot of modern influence from mario odyssey and stuff like that yeah the, a lot the, of creativity to it a lot of those shots you were mentioning the camera kind of being fixed and it might be like in this weird orthographic kind of camera view are you controlling penny like it let's say the camera wants you to run like from the top of the screen to the bottom left are you pushing bottom left? Are you still pushing up to control Penny? So, ah, man, it's so hard to explain this because, like, it, it just gets you so tripped up. But the thing is, it controls the way you want it to. You just need to trust it. Okay. Like, that, that's the thing that I think is hard to, like, get over. But just do what you want to do. The camera's going to go where you need it to. And you holding the left stick the way you want it to, your character's going to go where you want. Okay, and gotcha. That's the thing that I'm like, very impressed by. And, like, I feel like a lot of other games don't naturally do that because i think about something like ratchet and clank which is a bit more or way more of like almost a third person shooter in a way right so you're always using the camera so you're just kind of like taught to do that and even when you're playing uh mario like even mario 64 yeah. that's a bit more like you're, you're always adjusting the camera to like set up your run you just don't need to do that here so it's like it's Definitely weird, but them being so momentum-based and obviously inspired by Sonic. Like, this game's them being like, 
what if we did a Sonic in 3D but made it good? Mm -hmm. You know, that's really kind of like the thesis statement of the game. And I'm impressed so far with how well they've done that, specifically because the game, if anything, I've, I've already made a lot of comparisons, but the gameplay of it most reminds me of the quote unquote 2D levels in Mario Galaxy, mm, okay. which is a, a very high. Uh, compliment there so can't wait for more of this i definitely feel like people should uh, give it a shot doesn't seem to be reviewing as well as i expected it to but um I'm, I'm having a blast with it i think there's something special here uh penny might be the second worst uh design platform mascot character since astro boy god damn it. Um, you can't Astrobot say first. that Astrobot. seriously tim come You're on an idiot. i don't know man i don't make the rules this is the uh, guy who got five points off this game on fantasy critic don't listen to him people <laughs> I'm, talking about. Right, I'm trying all right i'm trying uh but anyways that's my little uh, steam deck adventures before we move on to other big things though barrett you have a steam deck adventure you want to talk about uh, yeah, uh, when I was finally able to pull myself away from Bellatro, which was really hard to do, uh, I finally booted up Ultros, which was kind of on our radar, if you remember, I forget, like, if this was at a PlayStation Showcase or something, but this is, like, a really trippy Metroidvania that I've played, like, the, only, like, the first hour of, so it's just, like, first impressions, I, I, I'm really, really digging it, um, really fun combat, uh, just something about it that just the flow of it is really interesting. And I think there's just something that's hitting me with this game that um, didn't with uh, Prince of Persia. That's like making me want to go back to Prince of Persia. Like I, I enjoyed Prince of Persia enough, but uh, there's like a lot of exposition, a lot of talking, a lot of uh, explaining things. Ultras, it really just like throws you in and you kind of just got to figure it out. Uh, whether it's like gameplay mechanics or just like what, what things you're picking up, <clears throat> where to go, all that stuff. There's just like a certain flow to it all that I'm really digging and appreciating. And so I just really just wanted to shout it out as like, hey, if you're in the mood for more Met Metroidvanias and you like really weird art styles and like really like uh, Tim, you said like a Adult Swim type of inspired art style. It's really, really fun. Like I, I, I'm a little past like the first like kind of tutorial boss or whatever. Um, and I think it's a good vibe. Like the only thing that I have like a, a critique about it is like your character walks kind of slow but that's pretty mm. much like the only thing that I, I can knock it for right now but yeah it's it's really cool it's really fun i'm i'm excited to play more of it um so yeah if you want to play something metroidvania -y that isn't prince of persia there's another one out there for you and i just wanted to shout it out because i feel like it got buried amongst all of the millions of games that have come out in the last three weeks i know wild uh well we're going to talk about more of those games after a quick word from our sponsor this episode's brought to you by Avatar Braving the Elements. We know you love talking about all things TV, film, and pop culture with us, so there's another podcast that we think you're going to enjoy. It's called Avatar Braving the Elements, and it's Nickelodeon's official companion podcast to Avatar The Last Airbender. Y'all already know Barrett loves Avatar. He thinks it's one of the best coming-of-age heroes journeys out there that perfectly blends enticing action, great comedy, and social commentary that's all backed by great art style and an iconic soundtrack. Each week, host Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko, for a deep dive and behind-the-scenes look into the Avatar verse you can't get anywhere else. Whether you're a longtime bender or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braving the Elements. Listen to Avatar Braving the Elements on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Y'all need to check out Kinda Funny Game Showdown, our weekly video game trivia game show. You can watch live on YouTube or on Twitch every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But now, thanks to popular demand, Kinda Funny Game Showdown is available on podcast services. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else, please subscribe and rate the show five stars. It really helps us get Kinda Funny out there. And we couldn't thank you enough. We aim to make this a video only show. So many of the games we best enjoyed watching on YouTube, but despite that enough of you guys asked for audio versions so we're making that happen anyways of course that also means if you have the kind of funny membership on patreon you will now also get the audio version of the show ad free no matter how you're watching or listening to kind of funny game showdown 
thank you. And if you haven't checked it out yet, there is no better time than now. We're already many episodes into the show, so you can catch up now on YouTube or the brand new podcast version of the show. If you love what we do, please get the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or on YouTube to get the show ad-free. If you just want to support us for free, please subscribe and rate Kind of Funny Game Showdown on your favorite podcast service now. Andy Cortez. Hey, Tim. You want to talk about a battle of the early access survival games, Nightingale and Enshrouded. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of questions about both of these games, which ones are worth kind of hopping into, which ones are worth maybe buying that may have like a better future and you just sort of wait for them because when it comes to early access games, I'm very much like I bought Hades way at the beginning and I just waited and then it came out. I was like, oh shit, really, really awesome game. But so much of the feedback is so crucial to these devs mm-hmm. to like mm-hmm. make the game that ends up becoming Hades, right? Um, and so Enshrouded came out same day as Pal World, buried. And nobody talked about Enshrouded. And, uh, and I was having a really good time with it. And then some people were like, wow, it really sucks that they, you know, Pal World came out and just took all of the, the news. Um, it's selling millions and millions and millions, and nobody's talking about Enshrouded. And it turns out Enshrouded still did really well. I think it's sold like over 2 million so far on Steam, which is kind of crazy for a, a Steam early access game. And Enshrouded, to me, is like, you could play multiplayer with friends. It is a survival game, just like, um, just like Nightingale is. But it's got this like very single-player focus vibe to it. A lot of players are worried about, can I hop into this with a friend? Should I do I need a, a group of people or will I be able to enjoy it alone? I pretty much exclusively played it in Shrouded solo and I put about 20 hours into it. The building in this game is phenomenal. It's all voxel based, just like you know, think of like Minecraft where you could just kind of dig wherever you want. Um, you're you don't have to find like certain rocks that are craftable or lootable or breakable or whatever. You can just kind of break into whatever you want. You can cut down any tree, build a house of your dreams, but it's got such a good single player loop. And it's one of the first survival games that's not procedural that at least to my knowledge um, that I've played, like everything else you hop into a world, you might see like certain houses and little thing layouts that are familiar looking because that's how the devs kind of coded them. But the world is all handcrafted and it's a massive world. And that may turn people off because you're not getting a different experience as everybody else but it's actually pretty sick to experience this game uh, because it is so it's so designed and the things you're experiencing are because the devs wanted you to find that thing in that area and there's so many moments because it is voxel based that you could dig wherever you might see a spot on the ground and you start digging and suddenly you look down in that hole and there's a massive like kind of underground dungeon you're like oh shit i want to go in there now and I think it's just got a really good loop loop to it. It's very Soulsy type combat, but I don't think it's like amazing by any means. What's up, Les? Question: I have a, a, what I think might come off as a very ignorant question, but like I am not like a survival game person, and so this is a genuine question. What is it? Since you're talking about it being like very handcrafted and all this stuff, what is it that makes it survival and not just an open world action game? Um, I, survival always go, whenever you throw survival in there, you got to assume you're going to be crafting and knocking down trees and breaking into rocks and minerals and finding a new, you explore far enough. And now you found, uh, this really cool gem, these mine of gems that you can then craft and then bring back and make a new item with, whether it's, mm-hmm. uh, a new weapon that you could craft, you, uh, you end up kind of like organically finding different, um, what do we call them? Like the the people that there's a guy who teaches you leatherworking, and there's a woman who teaches you spells, and so alchemy, blacksmith. Yeah, you find them kind of them. around the world, and they're kind of trapped. You need to rescue them, and then you can have them at your base. Yeah, you kind of like spawn them in your base, and um, the the idea. I think the things that are survival about it, though, aside from just all the crafting and base building, is uh. A little bit light, like I, I hate hopping into when we would play Icarus or Valheim, and it can get a little extreme at times with, um, my character's hungry, my character's thirsty, my character is about to pass out because he's not, he's super tired or whatever. And those games went super extreme with it, and I think in Shrouded mm. went the way opposite way with it. And it's like, you kind of don't have to worry about that. It's like, ooh, I thought I was going to love that, but I'm like, no, I kind of want the game to to force me to, you know, eat that piece of chicken you cooked, man, and you'll get, like, these buffs and 
Uh, I think it's a little too lenient on the survival side, but just exploration, uh, moving towards these zones, the whole idea is that like there are these zones that are enshrouded, and it's like this sort of red kind of gas that hurts you when you're in it sure. for too long. And you, every time you enter it, there's a timer. You have like five minutes you can last in the shroud. And you level up your character, and that timer will get longer and longer, and you can kind of keep exploring. Um, I think the combat is kind of its weakest point. It's not bad mm. by any means, but it... So talk to me a bit about this. looks amazing. When on, I look at it, yeah. it looks awesome. It reminds me a bit. Or it reminds me, I guess, just as a, at a look of Kingdoms of Amala Reckoning. You say it's Souls-like, though. So are you talking it's more like dodge roll? Wait, or is it counter? Is it... You have dodge rolls. You have parries. You have you have spells. You have, you know, you can find uh, the magic person that lets you, like, use your magic wand or whatever. You have bows and arrows and all sorts of things yeah. like that. I think... The, the Souls-like aspect is like having these these predetermined move sets that you know this boss is coming at you with this move, okay. let me dodge okay. here. Okay. It's It looks awesome, uh, you know, on paper, but I think it's like not fully realized yet. Again, early access, all this stuff could improve. Um, but it's still fun enough for sure. Um, I think I'm just more blown away by the level of quality in this early access title and discovering all these things uh, about the world that, I, I guess I've just played a lot of very mediocre and sometimes below average survival games. So I was just really impressed by the world here and the uh, the the glider is like a squirrel suit. It's so sick. So cool. um, you can uh, you end up unlocking a grapple hook that you can't just grapple anywhere. It's just certain parts certain of the points. world have like little Metroidvania aspects to them. Hmm. So now I can grapple up to that one spot I saw earlier in the world. Um, it's really damn cool and so promising um and one of those that i put way too much time into i'm like i similar to you with hellskate i want to stop because Play the real thing i don't want to get burnt out on it right now and i know that they're going to deliver more and more and i want to wait to see what more and more is when 1.0 hits i'm so surprised that you're this into these survival games because it seems like it started with like you and mike and nick and them just on stream just like it was having fun we had a sponsor stream for icarus it was a, an NVIDIA sponsored stream where we played Icarus. And we were like, yeah, sure, we'll check out Icarus. And then I put in like 80 or 100 hours into Icarus. And I just got really into the loop of it. It's just a super satisfying sort of thing. And yeah, Enshrouded being one of those titles that was super highly anticipated and came out. And again, Power World dominated all the news. Yeah, yeah. And some people were like, man, poor guys over at Enshrouded just getting buried. And they still sold over 2 million copies. There's still a lot of <laughs> rad, yeah. excitement uh, behind the title. So um in shrouded i absolutely recommend it if you are if you don't have a crew to play with totally fine don't worry about that play solo it is as rewarding and cool just to kind of explore the world and it's very much like breath of the wild sort of vibes i don't want to it's like when someone goes like this guy reminds you of lebron james it's like well he's you know chill out a little bit it gives me the vibes <laughs> of just walking around and going in certain areas and directions and just seeing that next thing digging into this area I, the building is so phenomenal. The building is like probably the best base building I've experienced where you can, uh, you can like just put two flat walls of stone up, but then you can carve in singular blocks into the stones. It's not just like, here's your set like window pattern. Like this wall sure, has sure, a window sure, sure. on it. This wall has a, a, a little like slot for the door or whatever. Because it's voxel based, you can just kind of you end up having like a little cube that you can like remove stone from this section or most it's so freaking awesome um there was a great a great video on tiktok of some guy streaming this and he was building an underground kind of basement for his house and he's there I saw after this. hours and hours and hours with this little pickaxe. just 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 using a pickaxe just using a shovel and digging and people are like and the video the tiktok starts with him being like what do you mean i can do that so yeah i'm using the shovel and then he scrolls and finds the this like it, it's just like an invisible cube kind of icon. He's like, just "What is it?" Out. He's like, "Are you kidding me?" And he just he's just able to remove gigantic blocks from the underground. He's like, "Dude, I've been digging this fucking three hole hours. I think is for what three it was. hours." No. And he could have just like t removed everything. Um, it's awesome. Highly, highly recommend Enshrouded. And what about Nightingale? So Nightingale, I previewed it and immediately was like this. Doesn't quite have the stuff that Enshrouded has, but it still is promising enough at the start. 
And then I think it seems very run of the mill and super generic at first in terms of like what a survival game is. And they they throw a lot at you in terms of there's this little guy talking to you and he speaks very Shakespearean and it's really hard to understand. You know, he's just throwing a lot of words at you, a lot of verbs, a lot of here so to verbs. a lot of henceforths and here to forths and shit like that. Is that a verb? <laughs> Who knows, man? <laughs> Ask him, bro. Um <laughs> The but um, the idea of Nightingale is that um, once you understand how the game wants you to play it, it really opens up and gets very, very exciting. And just like a game like Enshrouded, or just like a, a lot of other different games, it, it starts you off by showing you immediately in the tutorial, here's what you'll be doing. Not only are you going to be crafting things, but you will be portaling to different worlds. And you essentially have a big like gate door all powered, like, sort of, like, steampunk looking. It reminds me of, if anybody's watched Arcane on Netflix, the League of Legends show, very much, like, the technology there, kind of, like, it's magic, but it's, like, electricity, and, you know, um, it's, once the world opened up for me, and I was able to get past that sort of uh, entry point, you build your first realm, and you hop into another realm, and it looks completely different, it may be just be like a bit of a color change in some ways, but it's still really neat to experience when you are finally able to go to the first portal and you find new things in these new worlds that you can then bring back and you bring back to your new place and you are, it, it definitely feels very, very structured in terms of story. It isn't just like this hop into Minecraft and just kind of like have fun with it. Sure, sure, sure. You can do that as well, but it's very, very, it's very much guiding you. Like this is still a single player campaign um, that, you go find um, uh, one thing I love about it that a lot of uh, survival games don't do. Whenever you have like a pile of rocks and you're like, I just need to drop all this. I'm, my character's walking really, really slow right now. I'm, I'm encumbered right now. You can break it down and, and it becomes one of the world's main currencies. You can break anything down, similar to like breaking down a weapon in Destiny or something like that. Uh, and you can use that inventory or you can use that currency to then buy from essence traders. You break it down to essence. You go to an essence trader, and the essence trader is selling the blueprints to build a fucking sink or a volleyball court. Oh, Not things oh. like that, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> and it's like, oh, great! Like I do need it. I want that new door. I want like new. I have my house built, but I would love to have a different type of of roof or whatever. Sure, make it your own. And so the the core gameplay loop is essentially going to different realms, continuing the story while seeking out like for me new essence traders to see what else i can bring back home to like my main spot one really really awesome thing about it that a lot of survival games don't do is like when we played power world it's like mm -hmm. you're gonna have to hop into our custom server that we bought from a website yeah so like if i'm offline if we don't have a custom server you can't play yeah you could have to do so mike was able to play on his world come to my world and have his character Save no problem. Out, have yeah, get it out. Make it XP. That's everything. Cool. And he's able to hop in while I'm not online. So your world? Yeah. Oh wow. So because so that's like something I've never experienced, and I'm sure there have been some games out there that have done that, but it's just really rare to experience that where yeah, it's really always cool. the issue of well, we're gonna have to get a custom server because I don't want to have to wait for somebody to hop online or whatever. Uh, really, really neat that he was able just to hop into my realm and build his house on. Uh, I made sure that he built just far away from me. I don't want you near my stuff. Um, but it's just, it, it's got a really, really interesting hook to it. It's still very early access, much like in Shroud it is. Um, and I think there are some worries about maybe some, like, uh, enemy variety. I, I've seen, I've just been seeing a lot of, like, uh, Reddit posts that are kind of encouraging because it's usually a lot of Reddit posts being like, why are people mad? This is like pretty awesome so far. I saw one Reddit post being like, hey man, I don't like this game so far, not super encouraging. I played it for 50 hours, had a great time. Now what do I do? It's like, well, dog, you got 50 you hours. <laughs> like, you kind of did it, right? Um, it's Aaron Flynn, who used to work on the Mass Effect trilogy uh, for Bioware. This is his new team. And I think when it comes to storytelling, they're doing something really special. And that's why it's like, I kind of don't want to play it with friends because I want to experience what these NPCs are saying. But maybe I wait for the 1.0 release where characters will be voiced then or whatever. But sure, it's sure. it's the it's the push and pull of like, well, buy it for 30 now, buy it for 30 bucks now and get in early to support it or 
buy it when it comes out for 50 bucks in a couple of, you know, maybe in a year or so or whatever. So that's always the, the, the push and pull of early access games. You can buy it cheaper at first, but do you want to make that sacrifice and maybe get a game that isn't the one that you're hoping for? Uh, but so far, like, it's so hard to say which ones I would recommend more. I'd say I'd probably lean in Shrouded, but Nightingale does so many impressive things that it's like, Nightingale feels like the more AAA approach to mm. what a survival game could be, as opposed to usual, like, you know, a small indie team jank, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Very, very good games. Yeah. Oh, so many things I like about both these games, but then it's the survival stuff from yeah. Final Fantasy. I, just, I, I love that, that you're so into it. I think yeah. Enshrouded yeah. so is cool. the one for you then. Yeah. And Shrouded well, is that, like that's they're, they're saying the end of the year, right? Or theoretically this year for consoles and a 1.0, right? Really? Ooh, exciting. That's, awesome. yeah. I, that's exciting. Um, yeah, I think I think they're both very, very chill on the survival side of things, though. Like they are nothing like my experience with Valheim or Icarus, where Icarus, <laughs> Icarus it was raining on us every 10 minutes and we we're like thunder would zap you if you're outside. Like this, these are way more lenient and uh to the sense where you mainly only have to ever eat food to like give yourself buffs. Like you always have like a set health bar, but if you eat that meat with these fruits or with these berries or whatever, your health will buff and your stamina will buff and things like that. So um, it's definitely not as crazy as you might think it is. I'm, okay. de I'm definitely in a place where I'm trying to figure out what, what my survival game is going to be. Cause like, I hear people talk about this stuff. And then also when I ever, whenever I dip into a survival game, like I tried playing Lego Fortnite when that dropped and I'm like, so many of these things appeal to me in the way that I think, I, th I think Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom kind of like built up a lot of those systems for me where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm down to knock down a tree and collect the wood. Like I'm down to like fucking hit a rock and like get the material. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rock. That, and then also I put out a tweet as you were talking about Dark Cloud. Just the fact that like Dark Cloud is a game that has like survival elements and then roguelite elements and then town building elements. And they put out, if they put one out today, like that'd be such a hit. But yeah, like I'm. I, I think hearing you, hearing you, and so many people talk about these games, and like you know, kind of go from one to the next one, and talk about Ark, but now it's Power World, and now it's this, right? Like I'm waiting on like the one that I'm going to jump into and put a solid eighty hours into, and then like you know that be the one for me. I do get. Like, I think on the on to uh, uh, Greg's thing, right? Like I get exhausted hearing about all these survival games because I'm mm -hmm. like I want to put a hundred hours into all of them the way you talk about them, but I'm like. That alone sounds exhausting. So I'm waiting for the one, essentially. I, I think Enshrouded is probably the one I'd recommend the most for um, players looking for kind of like this this exploration game. And Nightingale is a lot less... Uh, I, I think it's a, a lot less like just go in any direction. It's a lot more guided. Um, but it is really neat to... You're going into a new realm. You're opening up this new portal. You walk through it really long load screen by the way <laughs> load screen load times are kind of nuts but then suddenly you're in this desert world it's like okay what the hell am i going to experience here and you see crazy fucking monsters and big giant walk in like you know cyclops looking dudes like dude wow like this place is kind of insane and also i forgot to mention uh nightingale's running on unreal engine 5 it is stunning it is so gorgeous um having the the light leak into your house and like the the side of your house is like kind of green because the green from your the grass is bouncing onto it. it's That's fucking cool. gorgeous dude i like the light leaking into your house i like that phrase oh, yeah that's a verb right there oh, yeah. that's a verb man <laughs> that'd be bourbon the the game the next hello games game that they announced that game Awards. everything or whatever is that what it's called no but oh, it's everywhere all at once yeah, yeah. Everywhere, everything everything everywhere, mike, all I remember when mike was googling uh <laughs> game hello games everything. next game <laughs> <laughs> that's a survival game right yeah okay that's good that's that seems to be like a you and your friends kind of. Mm. Uh, that looks neat. I, look, I, I size think, of Earth. <laughs> I think the same thing about No Man's Sky all the time. And I know there's a lot of people who are like, dude, you got to play No Man's Sky. But I just like, as we were talking, I was like, do I need to pick No Man's Sky back up? Like, should I try it again for like a third time? Dude, I, I, I'm t I'm telling you, get like give Enshrouded a light shot. Light no fire. Light, light no yeah, fire. light no fire. The Everything. the one of the reasons why I do love these games. You mentioning like Bellatro being your just kind of chill Zen out game. Mm -hmm. You've you, you put 80 hours into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's like, what can I do right now? And it there there's a very Zen like quality to. Yeah. I'm just at my PC. 
I have a podcast on. That's the thing is, I want to build something while having a podcast. On. Uh, dude, oh man, it's I want to build a community. For that. I want a game <laughs> that doesn't need my entire phone. Yeah, like I, I think Enshrouded's building is by far the best I've ever experienced in a survival game, and I'm insanely impressed. I, I'd say Nightingale doesn't have the same amount of things to build yet. There aren't like a whole lot of. Um, you don't get like this forecast of here's all the things I can build in the future. Um, and it doesn't seem as enticing a at first, but I think the level of customization that you have with Enshrouded um, and being able to just uh, like, I wanted like much taller windows. So I was like, oh, let me just carve like much larger, you know, blocks or holes into this big block of stone or whatever. It's just a lot more uh, exciting with the level of custom uh, customization you have. I think of this shit and like you're talking about all this like you know the size of your windows and I think of like when uh, fucking Fallout 76 made me build it was just this ramshackle house with like a fucking pot in there I'm like doing it Did I hit the objective to move on thank you yeah, I don't, don't want to do this I don't give a shit what this looks like <laughs> well Greg moving on to you I know you've hey, talked you a lot about Hell Divers too I sure have uh, but I remember last week you were saying that this was going to be your last weekend to be able to to dive into Hell as much as you think you're going to want to sure did you end up doing that. Yeah, no, the obsession with Helldivers continues. Uh, I'm in the mid twenties right now with my leveling of my character. The PlayStation clock on the, uh, the you know the front there, I think, says forty five hours in. Maybe it's fifty now. Um, and it was very much you know uh, with uh, Woods and Kofi in uh, on Monday to play some WWE. I was kick. I, I kept being like, I gotta, I gotta go play twenty three. I gotta go play two K twenty three. Get my sea legs back. And every time I would sit down, I would do it. But the first time would be Helldivers. I'm like, well. Khalif is on. He's got. He's just him. I can jump in and help him, and then everybody would join us. And we'd play for a while. You know what I mean? I would like Sunday night, same thing. Jumped in, saw one of my friends. I'm like, wow, well, I'll go help her. And I was just in. Yeah, I'm still uh, obsessed, and I would still be playing it nonstop if I wasn't on to another review. Yeah. Do you think you're going to? end up being able to go back to it or with everything coming out i think i'll go back to it i think i mean we're doing a stream tomorrow here right oh, okay. with the community and stuff so i think those will be like some nice little saving graces to get back into it i do feel and this is speaking not out of church on it i, I feel like i know quite a bit about it right i've crossed over on getting all the stratagems and the things i wanted at level 20 because now that you're past that like i can get anything i want right it, with, once I get currency, but I got the ones I feel like I really wanted, really needed. So now there is a bit of like, cool. I can keep leveling, of course, and you know, go up and unlock more stuff and do whatever, blah, blah. But I'm not feeling the carrot on the stick as much of like, mm. I am driving for this. I am collecting resources for this. Right now, I'm getting samples because, like, yeah, you get samples and you want them. And I'm like, I will get, I will unlock everything. So that inevitably, when they introduce the next race of uh, people we're going after, right, that it'll be like, all right. If they're weak against this mortar, I'll have it or be ready or sit on that currency so that when there is the next thing, I can invest and get that next thing to go that White way. White men, we're going after <laughs> We're going after We got next. bugs over here. <laughs> we got robots over there. We got white people here. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going from super earth to regular earth. <laughs> um, <laughs> kick the shit out of some fucking C-suite executives. How's the, uh, like, when I look at the things to unlock on the ship, yeah, it's like, dude, it's gonna take forever to get any of these goddamn things. How? What's your progression like there? It's for me not astronomical, but it's because of the way I'm choosing to play. I'm still playing Hell Divers very much from a, I want to play. I love this. I love the moments and I love the laughs. So yeah. I'm going to play with. Kevin and Joey and Khalif and then you know my friend Mia and that and I'm getting into things where people are either usually a couple levels below me. Mm. It, what I need to do if I if, if you wanted to unlock that stuff faster, it wouldn't be hard. It would just be okay. Cool, we need people who are levels higher than us to go with us, and we're going to take on harder difficulties so we get the super rare samples. So there's more of that. The XP's rolling in in a different way, kind of fun. Gotcha. Of okay. But I'm still using it as a social game rather than a. I feel like I need to grind this out. Because inevitably, you know, Joey, Kevin, all of them will catch up as we go and play more, and then we'll get off to the races of doing that if we really want to. But right now, I'm not feeling the need to go on, a, you know, a level nine Hell Divers mission, which is the hardest difficulty and all that jazz. Even though I have plenty of people in my DMs offering it, and I do want to do that with them to see it and get more stuff and yada yada yada. But I'm enjoying where I'm at right now. What a game! What a game indeed. That's the thing about it. Like you know, I mean, 50 hours in or whatever. It's just the fact that every mission every time has some crazy thing that happens or i feel awesome and then it all goes bad and you're dying you're struggling you're doing the thing it's just so fucking good how, how wild that 
on that drive back after we previewed it, we were like, that was good. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. I and, think, and, and I think a lot of it was maybe just not understanding the flow uh, as well as we could have. Also, we were, I wasn't on keyboard and mouse. Of course. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, coming out of the preview where it was like, yeah, that was Helldivers, and that's great. We'll speak. I, we were done and this is always hard with the preview, the disservice, I think, of, cool, we're starting you at level 10. So you haven't gotten that experience of, here's, your, you start with two, you're not even worried about what stratagem to take because you only have the right. one, right? So like you're building out to get to a kit to have a thing. And then also it was that thing where we had a developer rolling with us and they were taking it very seriously of, move, let's move here, let's do this, let's do that. And they're trying to teach you while we're fighting. So it was like... it. They that demo I think lost the fun of Helldivers of like it's fun to be overwhelmed and not know what's going on and then also be like oh man I shot the thing's fucking head off and its body's still coming after me like that's fucking rad and yeah. I dropped the thing on you by accident haha and crossfire and all that jazz I think that's what it was missing it was missing the chaos of getting in there with your friends and not knowing what you're doing or watching people figure it out and like do that Takito Broadsword uh, does uh, left a super chat here saying, "Too late for Helldivers for me. Are others too OP?" No, no. <laughs> no. The Helldivers community is super um, friendly, and people who are obsessed with it want to help with you. And it's that thing. Even for me, right now, like I, you know, I, the uh, Sunday night, my last mission was off with uh, Mia and her friends, and they were like level six, five, and seven, right? And I was twenty three, twenty four, whatever I am, right? So it was that idea of like cool i know everything but it was the inverse of what was happening when we were having like sc infected join our games where i was like just being quiet like i'm letting them figure out what they want to do and where they want to go and how they want to engage right and like yeah i had the cool you know i got a backpack drone out there that's killing everything and i've got my thing and i know the strategy for taking down a charger or whatever but even then it's not like i i can be i was one man arming it taking care of everything you know what i mean like i was hanging back letting it go but still feeling rewarded still getting the samples still getting fun times with my friends and seeing them experience it but yeah when we hopped in with level 1 nick it was like still a lot of fun because not only did we not play at the hardest difficulty but it yeah you don't feel like you're at the most ultimate disadvantage yeah. which is great it wasn't like hopping into like a destiny raid or something like that, where it's like, oh, I'm too level for this. I don't, I'm too low level. I don't belong here. Yeah. It somehow, it, it doesn't feel like an impossibility to kind of get these missions done, you know? Well, I think that, you know, so much of it comes down to experience and strategies, right? Because it really is like, okay, I'm level 23, which means I have the access to the, you know, the things that I've been able to unlock. It doesn't mean my character is stronger, right? It's like, doesn't mean that I've gone through, even if I was going to put a booster on, that's for the whole team. Like yeah. there's all these different things. So it's not like I'm God punching everything. Mm -hmm. I'm still subject to cooldowns and subject to all these different things. So it's a balance. And it's also always awesome then to show people what it could be. Right. I think that's one of the brilliance of it too. Like we, when we were playing with people, like SD infected, right. And we're seeing them rain, hell do orbital lasers. Like, that is a cool, actually motivating thing, I think, of like, oh, shit, and not let alone when you are slamming your head into the automaton front and somebody's like, well, you should be doing this or get that or shoot them this way. That's the helpful like chain of command thing yeah. I think that really helps. And again, me playing with lower level people, like I think back to like, you know, Diablo when I would join people's games and it would just be like, I'm just hitting everything and killing them, killing them, killing them, right? And it was like, cool, not only am I way overpowered for this, I'm getting no reward for it. Yeah. Whereas in this one, it is, yeah, I'm, I'm more powerful than the missions they're doing, right? I'm running usually like a level five or six, whereas they're on a level two or three or whatever. So I'm feeling very powerful, right? But it's also the fact that like I'm getting the samples out of it, which is what I want anyway. I'm getting the war bond medals out of it, which is what I wanted anyway. And I'm with my friends. It's not like there's this huge chasm where it's like, wow, I've wasted a night of my time playing it. Yeah. Yes, I could have min-maxed and I could have rolled with somebody who wants to go drag me to a level nine mission and I could have been like fucking cowering in the back trying not to, trying to figure it all out as I go. But like there's a nice balance to it, I think, where you can go play with your friends and not feel like you're screwing it up. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, I'm anxious to get back to it and see, uh, you know, what they add into it as we go. Closing out the episode here, Andy. I gotta hear your thoughts on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Obviously, you're not going to get too in depth into this. You and Mike right, are right. going to play through it. Also, I'm sure you're going to talk a lot about it on the stream itself. But uh, how far into it are you, and and what you thinking of it? Um, I decided to stop progressing because of our big Thursday stream, and realistically. How much are we even going to play on that thir big Thursday stream? What? Uh, well, I mean, you know, we had the Starfield stream and maybe 
put in about three hours or four hours of progress in 36 fair hours enough, of streaming. Fair enough. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, so I, I think I put in around 18 hours. Um, did not do a whole lot of side quests. I, I kind of just try to do uh, as much story as I could. Uh, having an awesome time with it. Um, I think the combat, they somehow improved it and made it even more intense, but even more rewarding and engaging. All of the character team up moves, the relationship sort of status updates, you know, going to see Baird and let him like, it's, it, it does seem in some ways like this is like, this is an RPG because I, I as Cloud am going to choose to be nice Cloud now, as opposed <laughs> to like very out of character for Cloud to be like, don't worry, man, you'll get it next time. And it's like, what the fuck? Cloud would never <laughs> be that encouraging. But I love seeing the responses from my squad mates and being like, oh shit, thank you, Cloud. I appreciate that. Um, they seem shocked sometimes. Yeah, like, oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying the world. I'm enjoying the characters. I, I think that... Um, there's a lot of, I, I tweeted the other day when the embargo went up, there's a lot of, there, maybe not a lot, but several things you'll want to just turn your brain off and say, video game logic, who cares? Turn brain off, enjoy product or whatever. But some of that stuff, it's like, how the, f nobody's really, nobody, like there's some moments like that where I just like, it's frustrating and you can't imagine somebody who has never played a game like this, experience it and just being like, how the fuck is this being ignored? This sort of thing, you know? But for someone like me who's played, you know, a couple of Final Fantasies now, at least, I, I'm a little bit more uh, easy on experiences or, or moments like that, rather. Um, I, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I think, the, uh, I think it's been improved in so many different ways. I think there's a lot of... The highs are so astronomically high that they'll, like, make you forget the last two tedious, boring things you did where you're like, Man, that shit, like, why, why am I being forced to do that? Yeah, why like, am I the, moving this generator? That, that seems, like an, ah, damn that generator. seems like an extra quest that uh, maybe like a small mini game for extra XP. Why is that part of the main uh, plot that you want me to have uh, push forward or whatever? There's like, again, yeah, the highs are just so high that they can easily make you forget the last couple of boring things you did. Um, but I'm still enjoying it. I don't see how I won't give it a five out of five by the end of it just really really impressive and uh the level of production when you get into those awesome cutscenes and <laughs> the visuals and the particles are flying all over the place it's freaking gorgeous dude uh my last question what are your thoughts of queen's blood queen's blood i like it but oh i skipped all the tutorials initially because uh, i was like i don't want to play this mini game i'm never gonna have to play it who cares it's all gonna be optional and then it suddenly was not optional <laughs> And I was like, Baron! fucking shit. <laughs> and, you know, I just had to kind of like learn on the fly or whatever. But um, that, was, that was a bit more annoying. But in the restart of the playthrough where it's like, I was telling Blessing and, and you, Tim, but there was a couple of boss fights where I was having a lot of issues um, where it was taking me way longer because I was not over leveled. I was like, I wasn't doing any side quests or, or anything like that. So now in this sort of re done playthrough where i'm starting from scratch i'm doing a, a lot of these side quests and i'm getting levels and i want to do queen's blood now and get xp and hopefully that'll make the boss fights uh, like you know a tiny less difficult but everything's just so enjoyable and now that i'm actually getting into queen's blood it's like oh i want all those cards oh you get this fucking card if you if i beat that dude yes like i i love it i really really enjoy it and i totally understand the appeal for it yeah well, you'll love to see it, everybody. Let us know in the comments below uh, what game spoke to you that we talked about today and how excited you are for Fallen Fantasy VII Rebirth if you're going to hang out with the boys having their little unknown journey beginning. Uh, but until next time, I love you all. Goodbye.